I hardly lose a trade while trading the forex market. I hardly ever lose trades. I hardly lose trades while trading the forex market. And the reason for this is not far-fetched. I have several reasons why I hardly lose trades. There are about uh, several reasons. There are about several reasons I want to give you why I hardly. I hardly lose lose trades so and those reasons if you if you uh, learn those reasons and start observing them the, it will actually help you as well not to lose trades to help you not to lose trades or help you to hardly hardly lose trades and make profits in the forex market All right so I'll start with the number one reason the number one reason why I hardly lose trades is because I take I take a plus setups, all right? So I take a plus setups. What do I mean by that? It means that I take my best setups. I've got I've got many strategies. If you are aware, if you have been following me on my YouTube channel, and you discover that this YouTube channel is because it's actually uh, uh, focused on giving you the best ways, the easiest and simplest ways to trade the forex market. All right, and I've shared one or two, or not just one or two. I shared several, several strategies with you. But among all my strategies, I've got, I've got strategies that are my go-to setups. I've got go-to setups, and among my go-to setups, I take the best one. I go for A setups, A plus setups. So I am very, very patient. I am very, very patient with my setup. If you are in my Telegram channel, some, some days you see I've got, I'll post a, a chart analysis and i'll wait i have to wait for my setups i don't go into the market with impatience so patience is very very vital patience patience is very vital you need to wait you need to wait you need to wait you need to wait for for your setups wait wait forest trading is forest trading is about 90 percent waiting that is professional forest trading, 90% waiting and 10% execution. Okay, 10% execution. What do I mean? You are waiting all most of the time to for price to form your setups. You are waiting for the market to form your setups. Your market, the market does not form setups all the time. You know, if you shake your shards in the morning when you wake up, uh, when you wake up in the morning to you shake your your the, the, your, your, your shards. You discover that you don't see your setups all the time so you do not enter you do not take trades when you don't see your setup you don't force trades you don't force trades okay you don't force trades forcing of trades you you, you forcing of trades is is a newbie mentality so you don't force trades you don't force trades you don't force trades when while trading the market you wait you wait you wait for your setups wait for your setups Okay, you wait for your setups, wait for your setups. You will have patterns that you trade. What is forex market? Professional forex trading is about uh, waiting for some patterns to form. And when those patterns form, you do what? You take your trade. So you don't just get into the market because you see a buy candle. You don't get into a buy trade because you see a buy candle. You don't get into a, a, a sell trade because you see a sell candle. No, you have patterns that that are that you have mastered patterns that you have come to understand patterns that you have come to uh to learn and understand and to get used to and you've mastered and so and when those patterns form you execute your trade so why do i what that is so that's why the first reason why i had little trade that i know my patterns i know my patterns i know my my patterns I know my patterns and I I wait patiently I wait patiently for my patterns okay so I don't I don't I'm not in a hurry so I wait I know that even if my patterns are not available at the moment in the market definitely with time over the coming days my patterns will form all right sometimes the market do not form your pattern all the time so you when you don't see your pattern you have to wait you have to wait learn to wait most traders most newbie traders do, don't wait they just feel that they feel that 
uh, 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 execution business in the market is equal to money no 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 when you are busy 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 business uh, busy to be busy in the chart busy on chart does not actually equate to does not actually equate to profitability okay it does not actually equate to profitability okay so you have to wait you have to wait the most patient traders are actually the best traders okay we are, we are uh, uh, professional traders professional trading professional trading professional trading is actually equal to uh, uh, sniper as a professional trading you are a sniper you are a sniper okay you are a sniper what does a sniper do a sniper wait wait and is focused at, at getting the right target wait for a target and then strikes okay then strikes so we are not professional trading is not uh, is not you are not a machine you are not you are not a machine gun okay you are not a machine gun professional trading is not machine gun whether you keep on firing and firing no you wait you're a sniper so that is the first reason why i hardly ever i hardly lose trades that's the first reason why i hardly lose trades so the second reason why i hardly do trades the second reason is because i I don't know even when I've got when I've seen my setups okay even when I've seen my setups even when I've seen my setups I don't take trades I don't I don't enter I don't enter a trade without without entry confirmation or confluences we call it confluences all right so i don't enter a trade without entry confirmation so for my setups my a setups when i see my a setups that does not mean that i have got, i've got to enter it no i wait to get some confirmations for my entry right there are confirmation there are some list of things there are some list of things i need to see that will tell me that this trade is the probability of this trade working out is going to be high so when i see those things i now get into the trade so i wait for my entry confirmations even if i have seen my a setups all right so seeing your a setups does not mean that you need to get in you need to wait okay some some uh, and some entry confirmations could be could be having some entry confirmations could include uh, having uh, having uh, like a bullish like a bullish or bearish bearish engulfing engulfing candle it could also be it could it could also be uh like having uh a change of character okay change of character return to other block okay could be like this that could be more 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 other entry confirmation if any if you are an indicator trader it could be it could be EMA crossover. It could be EMA crossover. It could be it could be MA MACD. It could be MACD. All right, MACD uh, 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 formation. So it could be many other things. There could be other factors, other factors that would inform you that this trade now is not ripe for entry. This trade is now ripe for entry. So what what you need to know is that you need to enter you need to always you need to have some list of uh, criteria you need to have some a list of uh you need to have a list of entry criteria okay entry criteria things that you shake things that you shake you shake that to ensure that they are okay before you enter a trade just like a pilot just like a pilot before a pilot takes uh, uh, takes off flies a plane there are some checklists there are some checklists there are some checklists they need to some 
some startup checklists they need to check to ensure that all is well before they take off so in like manner you need to have some a list of entry criteria that you have that you have written down i have them written down that not but i don't need to look at them because i've got used to them in my mind okay so but i have them written down in my written down somewhere but that's when i was when i was starting up but now i've got so much used to them so i have them in my mind when i see them i know that this is time to get into the trade even without look, reading the book all right so that's it so number three the third thing the third thing that you need to know that i do is that i i trade i trade only i trade only during during the period of highest market volume all right i only trade during the period of highest market highest market volume and that period of highest market volume who is the london the london session and partly partly the new york the new york session okay so and this new york session mostly the new york open new york open all right so because my time zone is my time zone is the gmt i work with the gmt the greenwich mean time the gmt time zone all right so basically i trade the london session and that is in my own time zone that is about 8 a.m i i actually trade the london session that is about 8 a.m to to mostly about 3 p.m gmt so this is when this is basically when i do trade okay anytime outside this time i don't trade because it is it is the the, the market uh, the market volume is low right so why do i trade the period of market high market volume it's because my setups will always my setups takes don't take much time to work out all right so when i get into the trade the trade comes uh the trade actually the uh, due to the high volume in the market the market uh, the trades work out faster for me, all right? The trades is this is uh, this this point is linked to the next point I'm going to be sharing with you, right? So this my trade takes don't take much time before they work out. So because of the high market volume, I don't have to wait so long for my for my setup to work out when I've got into the trade, all right? So the fourth thing, the fourth thing is related to the third. The fourth thing that I I actually do a reason why I I hardly lose a trade is because I don't. Uh, I okay. I only trade. I only trade. Uh, I only trade as I trade as. Let's let's have it uh, this way. The the fourth reason is that I am an intraday trader. That is related to the fourth. The, the third reason. I am an intraday trader right what this means is that most of my trades are opened and closed same day right most of my trade i uh, most of my trades are open and closed same day i'm not a swinger i am not a swing i'm not a swing trader mind you mind you mind you i'm not going to say that swing traders swing trading is not is, is not good and that's not what i'm saying that's not the point but personally i i love opening trades same day and closing them same day the reason for this is that the reason for this is that from my experience I, when i started trading i've tested the swing trading i've done the i've done the scalping trading you know basically there are about uh, you there is there is the swing trading swing trading swing trading actually means holding trades you holding trades for like for days days and even weeks okay basically there's also there's also position trading position trading most uh most hedge funds multinational big uh, billion dollar uh traders the position trading they actually they could actually hold trades for months just like uh where warren buffett all right well like warren buffett is a, is a position trader he all holds trades for, for a long time all right he hold trades can even hold trades for years months and years all right he's a position investor 
So there's also swing traders. Swing traders, they hold trades for days and even weeks. Right? They hold trades for days and weeks. Now there is there are there are there are day traders. There are day traders. These ones they open and close trades just within the same day. Within same day. Okay, and there are there are scalpers. Okay, these ones the whole trade just within minutes. Within minutes. Okay, so for me, I am a day trader. I'm a day trader. The reason why I'm a day trader, why I, I've actually tried, I've tried, I've not done position trading except when I invested in when I invest in the stock market. But when it comes to forex, I've tested swing trading, day trading, even scalping. Now, but I've come to I've come to I've come to uh, settle for the day trading because it's 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 actually the scalping might be too fast for me while the swinging might be too slow for me but the day trading helps me to actually trade open trade the same day and close them the same day right because why a lot can happen over the night a lot can happen over the night right a lot can happen over the night and high a, or a high impact news a high impact news can impact your trades so that's why i love opening trades same day and closing them so they getting the results of my trade so that, that's why i trade i actually mostly trade the 15 minutes to five minutes uh, sometimes sometimes i do 30 minutes right sometimes i do 30 minutes but mostly my trades fall within the 15 minutes to five minutes right so that i can have those trades close same day right so that is one of the reasons why i think i also uh i also have uh, hardly lose a trade because I ensure that I see to it that my trades close and the other environmental factors, uh, external factors like fundamentals, the fundamental factors do not hardly impact my trades, all right? Because I ensure that the such trades that I open, I will enter trades when there are no upcoming fundamental news or fundamental activities like high impact news or economic news, economic uh, events, and I ensure that I close them before. Uh, such economic event comes up so that is why i perceive i hardly lose a trade that's another reason why i hardly lose a trade so number five so the fourth the fifth reason the fifth reason the fifth reason why i hardly lose a trade uh, is because i don't i don't use a very a very tight stop loss I don't use a very tight stop loss when i when i actually started trading some traders would some traders that call themselves i don't want to mention their names but they 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 they, they, they derive pleasure in telling me i'm talking about tight tight stop loss one pip one pip two pip stop loss there's no pride in telling me that you use the you have the one pip or two pip stop loss there is no pride in that what matters is am i profitable am i profitable right what matters is am i profitable that is what matters my having a one pip or two pip stop loss does not really mean that you're a profitable trader okay there's nothing to pride about that what is more important is that you need to give your trade some breathing space you need to have learned that i need to give my trade some breathing space you need to understand that trades take trades have to have the market you need to give the market some breathing space all right so basically most of my my stop loss my stop loss actually fall between because I've had my 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 mentor, my mentees ask me, okay, what's what's your average stop loss? My average stop loss, my average stop loss falls between five pips, five pips to twenty pips. Okay, my average stop loss falls within five to twenty pips, five to twenty pips. All right, that is my average stop loss, five to twenty pips. So I need to give the market, I give the market some breathing space. Let my trades work out. Okay, sometimes when if you do not, if you have too tight stop loss, your your stop loss will be could be triggered, and after being triggered, your stop loss could be triggered. Your stop loss could be triggered, and then the price, the markets, market goes, market will now go in your intended intended direction okay so and this is uh, we don't want this we don't want this so better you give your better you give your your stop loss some breathing space give your trade some breathing some breathing room 
okay that is what i do to give i give my trade some some breathing room so it is important and i advise you as a trader give your give your trade some breathing room now let me let me explain for example for example you have uh, you have the market uh, you have like uh, a demand zone that you want to trade a demand zone and you can see that the market comes down to mitigate this uh, this demand zone mostly this is the zone this is the zone all right so when you do your uh, your refined entry and you have a break of your break of structure upside the change of character it's necessary that you put your stop loss at the other side of the zone all right at the other side of the zone put your stop loss avoid putting your stop loss just right just right at the at the point whereby you have you have uh you have the zone just not at the middle at the point of the zone right so give your give your it's necessary you give your trade some form of breathing some form of breathing space is necessary it's very very necessary to give your trades some form of some form of breathing space okay it is important that you give your trade some room some room for example now you can see this demand zone right here and see this demand zone right here okay see this demand zone so if you if you if you put your stop loss right here this stop loss you see that your trade might be your trade your stop loss could be triggered before the market goes in your intended direction so you need to this is your way you identify the zone you identify the zone give your stop loss let there be some few pips few pips this is room some room give your stop loss some room some room to breathe okay some room to breathe you give your trade some room to breathe so like one to two pips outside the zone outside the zone there should be one to two pips outside the zone so your is so if 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 the market goes that down and now hits your stop loss outside the zone there's very likely there's very very high likelihood that the trade the market the trade will continue to go in the other in the reverse direction all right the trade will go in the reverse direction look at this another example as well this is another example is another example so this trade now this let's assume this is the zone this is the zone this is the demand zone here so for for traders that would just put their stop loss right here okay put their stop loss right here you see that the market took out the stop loss and now bought up the market took out the stop loss and bought up but if you if you are giving your 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 trade some form of breathing room there would be there would be hardly the market will hardly take out your stop loss so it is just important that you you give your 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 trades some form of breathing room your stop loss some form of breathing room in order for the market to to prove you wrong okay you need to give your market give the market some room to prove you wrong else you could have the market you see to a the market takes out your stop loss and then goes in your entire market direction i don't want that to happen to you it's very painful okay it is very very painful so the next reason the next reason is it number five okay the fifth reason the fifth reason let's see is it number five okay i think so the fifth reason the next reason why the market uh, hardly 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 take out my my stop loss okay uh, that is the sixth reason yes that's the sixth reason this is why the market hardly takes out my stop loss is because i trade i always I always I always trade I always trade within or along I, I, I always trade in line in line with the dominant dominant trend okay I always trade in line with the dominant trend so in an in, in a smart monitoring we call this dominant trade this market structure i always drum i always say market structure is very important market structure or order flow is important i made videos on market structure order flow so it is important that you take trades that are in line you take trades that are in line with the market market structure or the dominant trend of the market so you have a market a bullish market structure the market for me higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows 
higher highs, breaking structure, breaking structure to the upside. All right, higher highs and higher lows. All right, so in this in this market, this is a bullish market structure. You have no business taking sell trades. You have no business taking sell trades. You should be taking only buys only. Buys only. Okay, buys only. All right, so when you use like if you take sell trades on this market, you are if you like trying to cash a falling knife. You will try. You will try to catch a falling falling knife or standing in front of a moving train, right? So when you take trades, taking trades, taking trades outside uh, your, your the market structure or in, in, antagon, in antagonism or in opposition to the market structure is like trying to cash, trying to cash a falling knife or standing. Standing in front of a moving train. Okay, and you know this is not good. This any of these is is uh, is uh, hazardous. Any of these is hazardous. All right, so it's not. It could cause problems. It could cause you problems. It could cause losses. So you that's why you need to avoid. We I, I showed you the bullish market structure. So if you have also like uh, a bearish market structure, the market creating higher and higher and lower lows and lower highs lower lows and lower highs lower lows and lower highs so in this case you have no business taking buy trades in this market structure this is purely purely the sell market okay sell only okay so i don't take i don't take trades that are outside my market market structure i don't take trades that are that are that are that are in opposition to the dominant trend so this is this has helped me a long time this this has helped me this cannot to help me so that is one of the reasons why i hardly lose a trade because the market is like when you take trades in line when you take trades in line with the market structure taking trades in line with the market structure in line in line with uh with the market structure market structure it's like it's like it's like actually it's like moving with the flood it's like moving moving with the flood within mo moving with the tide all right when you move with the tide the the movement is a little is a lot more easier all right it's a lot more easier you are you're moving with the tide it's more is less is less stressful so the market even if so, so sometimes sometimes the trades just work out you find out that the trades just work out because you are in the dominant trend you are moving you are trading in line with the dominant trend so the trades most time just work out for you okay because the trend is your friend so you need to understand that each time you trade before you take a trade ask yourself what is the trend what is the trend this is this cannot be overemphasized this cannot be overemphasized every professional trader knows this and this is a very important secret and in fact in fact it's no secret just that we are we are impatient all right due to the fear of missing out we are impatient we are impatient so i have no business take even if i see for example for example uh, i have uh, a bullish market structure all right this is these are demand zones these are this is a supply zone this is a supply zone this is a demand zone so i shouldn't be expecting to sell down no i shouldn't be expecting to sell down i shouldn't be expecting to sell down no even though the market will likely come down to mitigate itself but i you don't know when the market is going to come down all right so this is wrong this is wrong what is right is buys buys you buy you buy all right so you need to understand this very very no matter how good a supply zone is all right no matter how lovely a supply zone is if it is on a bull if it is a bearish market structure you don't take you don't if it's on a bullish market structure you don't take a supply you don't take a supply zone the, the supply zone is invalid all right no matter how good a demand zone is if it is on a bearish market structure it is invalid i don't know if that is clear let me come again let me let me repeat that that statement no matter how good let's let me let me write it down for you a supply zone a supply zone is invalid is invalid is invalid if it happens is invalid in a bullish in a bullish 
structure market structure okay and a demand zone is invalid in a bearish bearish uh, in a bearish in a bearish market structure so this you need to understand this very very important don't be tempted avoid the temptation to take trades that are in opposition to the market structure so they finally 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 the seventh reason why i had to lose a trade is because is because is because i take this is very very important please pay attention to this very very important is because of two things the trade the trade may go in uh, against me but i play this defensive i play i use what is called defensive trading if you are here to see my video i've made a special video on the 100 percent no loss strategy all right the 100 the ultimate no loss strategy i made i've linked that video i'll link that video in the screen box of this video all right i'm going to link that video in the description box of this video all right so I'll put a link to that video to be in the description of the video. So there could be a trade I could have, I could have, I could have, I could have like a, a demand zone here, and I, 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 I get my confirmation entry to take a trade. I could get into the trade, make some profit. And then the market could still come and and fail. The market might fail. So what it means that I could make what it means that I still I can make a trade. I can make profit on a trade that actually later failed. Why? Because I make I I I I I, I trade the no loss strategy most times. Most of the trades that fail have made something out of it before it actually fails. What do I mean? I imply I do what is called I two principles. First thing. I take partials, take partial profit. I take partial profit. Number two, I move stop loss to break even. Very, very important. Those, these two principles are very important. All right. So when a trade, you take. Let me write it again for you, so it be clear. First thing is that I take, I take, learn to take, take partial. And some traders don't agree with this. They believe that once you place, you place your stop loss, place your, your take profit, you just allow it to hit, allow your take profit to hit or your stop loss to hit. That might be okay for some traders. But for me, I take partial, learn to take partial, partial profit and move move stop loss to entry moving stop loss to entry means breaking even this is very very important key okay it's a very important secret so you need to you need to learn to protect yourself right when you take some partial profit you cover your you cover some some uh, some trading expenses and you now wait for the other portion of you take out some portion in profit and wait for the remainder uh position to get to uh uh, take profit so so you take partial profit and you now wait for the remaining position to either hit break even or hit the final take profit so it's very very important so learn to take partial profit learn to take partial profit learn to take partial profit and also learn to move your stop loss to entry all right so if i have if i have a zone if i have uh if i have a, a a a supply zone that i want to trade the mitigation if i have a supply zone i want to trade the mitigation when i do what is called the the confirmation entry and i discover that uh there's a change of character and i get in i should be able to take out something here i should take out something here some some profits Okay, I should take out some profit even if the market is going to reverse and go out. I should take out some profit and place my stop loss, move my stop loss to entry. All right, what is called break even. I should break even. 
the market could go in my direction or could hit my break even all right so in essence in essence in essence i could say in essence that my stop loss hardly hit instead my break even hit this is key this is key my break even can get hit frequently but my stop loss hardly hits this is key this is important so please try to view that video on my no loss my no loss strategy my ultimate no loss strategy all right my ultimate no loss strategy try to view that video it will help you indeed to actually become better at trading all right so uh that's the seventh strategy and that's it so if you are here to join my free telegram channel kindly do so the link to that telegram channel is in the description box of this video and also if you want me to mentor you i have there are some things that i don't share that i might not be able to share i might not have the time to share on my on this youtube channel and i share those those secrets with my mentees and i share those secrets with my mentees so if you want to join me you want to become a mentee you want to enroll my one-on-one -on -one mentorship training i provide one-on-one -on -one mentorship forest mentorship, mentorship training and if you want me to mentor you personally and groom you and make you uh, help you to become better at trading, contact me. My contact detail is in my Telegram channel and my Telegram channel link is in the description box of the video. Please contact me and we'll start up that trading, personal one-on-one -on -one trading. And after that trading, I trust you're going to be far, 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 far better. You're going to get value for that. Right? So do contact me and your trading journey will have a shift to the positive side. So till I come your way next time, do have a wonderful and a blissful day. Bye.